Hello everyone, Wolfring here. Today we want to look at look at an algebra problem. The problem goes like this: If a and b are two real numbers, and we have a times square root of one minus b square plus b times square root of one minus a square equals to one, we want to show that a square plus b square equals to one. Now there are many methods to solve this problem. We want to look at two methods. First one is the most straightforward one. We want to start from the first equation and simplify it and get to the second equation. Now, if you look at the first equation, it has two square root items on the left hand side. We want to square it on both sides at some point. But the problem, the key is that we don't want to square it like this because it will create an item of the product of those two square root items, which is hard to reduce. Instead, we can move one of the square root items to the right hand side and then square both sides. Then you can, we can expand it and clean up. We, come, we end up with this equation. Now, if you look closely at this equation, it is actually a perfect square. So if we uh, represent, replace square root of 1 minus a square as x and then b as y. So this is just x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So this equals to this. Then it's straightforward because we know b equals to plus or minus square root of a. And then we square on both sides, we get a squared plus b squared equals 1. That's the conclusion we want to prove. Okay, this is a little bit tedious, but pretty straightforward. Now we actually have other another way to solve this problem. This is a common technique. Whenever we see a square root of 1 minus a, b squared, another uh, square of an uh, and variable, we try to replace the original variable with sine and cosine functions. Because we know sine squared plus cosine, uh, sine alpha squared plus cosine alpha squared equals to 1, so it's pretty straightforward to get rid of the square root in that case. With that in mind, we get method two. Now, first we check the definition of a and b. Because it's, it has definition, the square root of 1 minus a squared and the square root of 1 minus b squared has definition in the uh, real world, which means both 1 minus a squared and 1 minus b squared are larger or equal to 0, which means a and b are between minus 1 and plus 1. Which means now, because they are bounded between uh, minus one plus one, so we can represent them as a sine function. So there exists some angle alpha and beta such that a equals to sine alpha, b equals to sine beta. Cool. Now we look at the original equation. We replace that with alpha and beta. And notice that square root of 1 minus b square is square root of 1 minus sine square, sine beta square, which is cosine beta square. Now we can get to this equation pretty straightforward. Now this is, looks familiar because this is just the sum formula of sine. So this can be rewrite as sine alpha plus beta equals to 1. Now a sine value is 1, which means the angle itself is a right angle plus or minus 2k pi. Right? So alpha plus beta is a right angle, which means sine beta equals to cosine alpha. All right? Then we'll look at a squared plus b squared. It's just sine alpha squared plus sine beta squared. And sine beta squared is cosine alpha squared. So this one is just sine alpha squared plus cosine alpha squared, which is equals to 1. And that proves the conclusion. And that's it for today.